Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Heart Slayers. You're here with the Heart Slayer, Derek Acosta, on my own today as my fellow Heart Slayer and co host, Meg Turner, is out on assignment at PAX East in Boston. But you still have me today. We're going to be taking phone calls, answering emails, solving all your relationship problems. So, without any further ado, let's get it started. All right, everybody, we're going to take an email, and this comes from a viewer who goes by the letter A, and it says, Hi, Heart Slayers. Recently, I tried reconnecting with my best friend, with whom I messed up the friendship by getting too drunk in his car and vomiting in it. He was very angry, and we never hung out again after that. That was five years ago. I reached out to him over Facebook and haven't heard back. I think I have to come to terms that he moved on and ignores me now. After thinking about it, the few friends I do have do not share the exact interests as I do and are in different parts of their lives. Uh, for example, raising children or on the verge of homelessness. I've been exercising, listening to self-help, defining my goals, and trying to have a good time, but I feel like my friends are not really adding anything to my life. They just sit on their phones and smoke weed. Is it wrong of me to cut ties with them even though I do not have many friendships? My friend I mentioned before would be down to do all of the things I have mentioned and possibly explore new things. I really want to salvage our friendship, but he hasn't replied to my apology. In the past, he was the only friend to ever visit me in the hospital and spend time with me there. I feel like I lost a very important person in my life. Now I'm having trouble filling the void. Was I too late? Is he being immature? Should I call him? Should I focus on myself and, or, and be a hermit for a while? What can I do? I'm 27. Help me, heart slayers. Uh, A. Okay, A, thanks for the email. So you had a friend who was very near and dear to you a few years ago, and then you puked in his car, and from that point on, the friendship was ruined. Uh, all the friends you have currently don't seem to uh, inspire you very much or be on the same page as you, and you're wondering, should you cut them off? Should you get new friends? Well, you know what? stands out to me from your email is the fact that your friend cut you off after, you know, a little barfing incident where you were too drunk in his car. That kind of seems like a, like a innocuous event to just cut somebody off completely out of your life. And I'm willing to wager it was more than just the barfing incident. So perhaps that was the final straw in some way uh, that you were rubbing your friend the wrong way and he just couldn't take it anymore. Now, to be honest, the fact that he hasn't spoken to you in five years, it's probably going to be hard to bridge that relationship and get it going again. I mean, that's not just going to happen at, at the drop of a hat just because you had one email. I think if you really do care about this person, it's worth – continuing trying to contact them but at the same time they kind of just cut and left you without any conversation without any explanation so it might beg the question how much did this friend really care about you to begin with uh as far as all of your current friends not living up to your standards or meeting what you feel like you need in life out of a friend uh i wouldn't necessarily say cut them off you know because you've been on the flip side. That's exactly what your last friend did to you. And now you're wondering if you should do it to them. But at the same time, you you know how much it hurts when somebody just up and leaves out of your life like that. I would encourage you to perhaps try to branch out to make new friends or to encourage your friends to get out of their shell. If all they want to do is smoke weed and play on their phones, maybe you can organize an event where you're not sitting around the house so much anymore. But of all the things you mentioned that you're trying to do with your life, reading self-help, exercising, setting goals, those are all great things. And those are positive, progressive things. But the thing that wasn't on your list is, you know, just genuinely finding things in your life that make you happy. And the reason I say that is because the list that you gave uh, in your email about what you're doing in your life, it all kind of rings with this air of dissatisfaction uh, in your life. 
exercising, self-improvement, setting goals, those all sound like you're trying to fill a fill a hole, fill a void. And that's even something you said about your friend not being there for you. Like you feel like there's a void. And so my advice to you really would be to take a moment and discover the things that really just make you happy on an individual level. Uh, goals are good and achievement is good and success is good. But a lot of times when you look at successful people, you find that they've accomplished all these things and they've accomplished all these goals and they've made a ton of money and, and sometimes they're famous and, and, you know, their resume and reputation is huge and wonderful, but they're still not happy people. And so, you know, material gain and all that stuff may not necessarily be the path that you need to be going down. Sometimes it's not about becoming successful or achieving things. Sometimes finding happiness is a lot simpler than that. And it sounds to me like the reason you are missing this friend is because you expect him to fill this void of dissatisfaction in your life. The reason you're upset with your current friends is because they're not filling this void of dissatisfaction in your current life. And I think that that's something that nobody else is going to be able to fill for you. So uh, my advice is to try to find those things on your own. Look into yourself, you know, maybe do some soul searching, maybe uh, do some spiritual exercises to get yourself just feeling happy and feeling positive without having to depend on other people. I think when you do that, you're going to find that people are more attracted to you and that these friendships are going to start blossom blossoming uh, in a way that they haven't so far. Uh, so that's my advice to you, and I appreciate your email, and bye. Okay, everybody, this next email comes from a viewer who goes by the letter J, and it reads, Dear Heart Slayers, my girlfriend and I have been dating each other for two years, but a couple months ago, she mentioned that she'd like to have an open relationship. When I said that I didn't like the idea, she called me vanilla. <laughs> she brought it up a few more times. I told her that if she wanted an open relationship, that we could break up and she could pursue it with someone else. We're still dating, and she brings it up periodically. I love her, but I'm very uncomfortable with this. I feel like it would be a very one-sided arrangement. I'm unsure about what to do. We've talked it over numerous times, and she still brings it up even though I am against the idea. She's bisexual. I'm straight. We're both 20 years old in college. What do you think we should do? Thanks for your time, Jay. So, Jay has a girlfriend, and the girlfriend wants to open it up to more people coming into the relationship. Now, I'm not going to say open relationships don't work. I'm not going to say they're bad. I'm sure for some people, they're great. But from my personal experience, everybody I know who's been in an open relationship has left that relationship. The relationship ended up not working out. Now I know, he, let me give you some examples. There's this couple I'm familiar with who were married and the guy proposed to the wife that even though they're married, they should have an open relationship. They'd be free to experiment sexually with other partners. The wife was against it at first, but she said, okay, I'll go along with it. And what ended up happening was she started hooking up with a bunch of guys and the husband never got anybody to come into the open relationship. And even though it was his idea to begin with, he started to get racked with jealousy. And then he tried to close Pandora's box, close the relationship that he had opened. And you know what? The wife didn't want to do it. She realized that she liked being with other guys other than her husband. And they ended up getting divorced. That was one example of an open relationship that didn't work out. Another relationship. Totally different couple. Uh, people who were dating that I know personally who were in an open relationship. Uh, at first, it worked out. Both of them were hooking up with other people. And still coming together and saying, I love you the most. And I want to be with you. And I'm happy being with you. And I'm glad we're in this open relationship. But slowly what started happening was this air of suspicion. And suddenly 
one partner was saying to the other, and what I think happened was that uh, one of them slept with somebody who the other person didn't like. And suddenly the other partner was saying, oh, I think you should get checked for STDs. Uh, I think you should go get checked for herpes. And I think that in this way, you know, it was still a perpetuation or a manifestation of some jealousy. And he was kind of holding the open relation against his girlfriend, even though they were both doing the same thing. And she didn't want to do it because, you know, she felt like I don't need to be, you know, I should be above this level of suspicion. And then slowly the guy started hanging out with another girl and sleeping with her, being in a relationship with her and spending more time with her. And it seemed like his favoritism started to pass from the original girlfriend onto the new one. And slowly they just started to drift apart until once again, they broke up. So it's my opinion that open relationships, they often lead to jealousy or they often lead to weird forms of like accusation and suspicion or just dynamics that are not really uh, thought about or conceived at the initial phase uh, when you open up the relationship. That being said, I'm sure there's tons of people out there who make it work, but what I think is important is to go into a relationship from the outset, knowing that that's the situation you're going to get into. You didn't sign up for an open relationship. When you got into the relationship with your current girlfriend, you guys knew you're gonna be mutually exclusive with one another. And frankly, this was not part of the bargain. Uh, so the fact that your girlfriend keeps bringing it up, I think what you said to her initially was the right thing to say. If you want to be in an open relationship, you should go find somebody who's comfortable with that. But that person ain't me. Uh, you guys are still together and the issue continues to be brought up. I don't think that the issue is going to go away. It's clear from what you say that your girlfriend wants to see other people, and I'm going to wager she already has somebody in mind who she is thinking about getting it on with. So maybe it's just in the best interest, and honestly, the nicest thing you could do is just to let her go be with that person and say, maybe we should take a break. I'm going to say there is a way where you could uh, break up with her and still tell her, like, I don't think we should be together. I think that we should date other people and look, if you still want to call me up and hook up and have booty calls and be friends, we can do that. Uh, that's an option, but I will warn you that if that's the route you go, you're basically giving her what she wants because at that point you'll, you will essentially be in an open relationship where you guys are free to spend time together and sleep with each other and also do that with other people. So maybe that is not going to work out for you. Either way, no matter how you play it, I think that this is probably not the best relationship for you. You need to find somebody who only wants to be with you because it's clear from your email that's what you want out of your partner. And if your current girlfriend is not able to be that person for you, or if she's going to be unhappy in that role, I don't think you should keep, you know, keep her in that role or force her to be exclusive to you when she really doesn't want to be. It might make you happy, but maybe it makes her unhappy. And if one person is happy in a relationship and the other person isn't, that's not really a functioning relationship. Maybe before you just dive into breaking up with her and letting her go, you can have that conversation with her and say, look, I'm happy just being with you, but if you're not happy just being with me, then this is not a fully functional relationship, and maybe we should reconsider if we really want to be together. That's my advice to you, Jay. Uh, thanks for your email. Let us know how it all works out. Good luck. All right, everybody. We're on the phone here with an anonymous caller. Anonymous caller, you were talking to one of the Heart Slayers. What's up? Hey, so um, uh, pre uh, something particularly interesting with me is that I tend to uh, uh, get in relationships with uh, long distance girls, um, but never local. And I'm trying to think if like this is a problem, like if. Like, it's, I don't know why it's happening, why it's a reoccurring situation, but um, 
I guess what I'm trying to look for is like if I can actually find someone local and I just know for a fact long distance won't lo work for me personally. So, um, so that's your question. Oh, like, uh, you always get in long distance relationships and you, you oh. have problems finding people locally to date. Yeah. But, uh, I'm actually not really get into long distance relationships. Uh, I, I tend to, um, you know, get friendly. Uh, that's probably the extent I'm, I should say, or I'm willing to say, but yeah. Uh, just, um, I tend to get along with people uh, more in a long distance sense. Yeah. Um, varying degrees. Can you give me an example? Uh, like what was the last long distance relationship or friendly situation you were in? How did that go? Uh, recently, uh, I've been talking to um, a girl from Washington. I'm from the general Northern California area. Okay. Um, just talking to her um, a good amount. Um, and last time I saw her in person was like last August. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's about eight months ago. Yeah, about eight months. Um, and we tend to talk, but um, I'm actually kind of, I keep it, um, my conversations. Your conversations, uh, what? You cut out there. Uh-oh. Did we lose our anonymous caller? Are you still there? Oh. Oh, you lost the call. I I think the anonymous caller hung up. <laughs> Hold on, they're back. Hey, we lost you there. Are you there? Yeah, sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, the last thing I said, um, I tend to keep my um, distance with these girls. Um, so when we do chat, we just I just try to keep it friendly. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, everybody who watches Heart Slayers knows my personal opinion that long distance relationships are tough and they kind of suck. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, it's just nice to date somebody who's nearby and, and you can have like a... I mean, the goal of a long distance relationship is to eventually make it a, a, a short distance relationship. So skip the BS and get to the good stuff, right? Yeah. So what exactly is your question or your situation? What do you feel like your problem is? Um, well, I just tend to think uh, that I probably should be looking for someone local. Yeah. But um, I tend to, uh, I think a lot of like why I get these uh, more intimate, um, yeah, somewhat intimate relationships, uh, long distance, because, um, I, I meet these people at cons or events and then, uh, I find that I have similar interests and then I, uh, talk to them more yeah. and that's where, it's, uh, locally that's usually not the case. And I even go to events locally, but never really, um, I find anyone that like really pikes my interest. Let me ask you something. I, per, I have a theory of yeah. why people get into long distance relationships. And I think it's like a comfort issue. Like when you're communicating with somebody, usually through a computer and you don't have to like dress up or make yourself look good or go out or entertain them. You guys can just kind of talk and connect just through like thoughtful conversation. And then you just naturally start becoming like, enamored with each other do you think that that's maybe what's going on with you like it's easier to talk to people um doing these long distance uh, relationships because the communication is like it it just turns intimate intimate because all you're doing is communicating so frequently yeah um it's actually varying degrees of intimacy um with some of the relationships uh yeah. but uh yeah that's uh i guess i do find that um I'm a lot more nervous in person. And what I do, I do make an effort to appear nice to these people. And I have no problem with that, honestly. Um, it's great when I do get to see them. But uh, I, um, I'm not too self-defeatist, but I do try to, like, keep, my, uh, keep myself at bay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I get that. I think that the key really to finding a relationship is you really have to put yourself out there and you just have to give it a shot and you just have to try your best. 
And honestly, it's a little bit embarrassing sometimes, and it you fail sometimes. And uh, I know being a guy, sometimes you're worried about coming on to a girl or coming off the wrong way or feeling like you're being a creep. But I think that you don't need to worry about being a creep uh, if you're not being creepy. Like if you're not like being a slimy guy and, and, you know, putting your arm around girls and making them feel uncomfortable. But if you're just legitimately like interested in somebody and talking to them and, you know, it just not being a weirdo, then you really have nothing to worry about. I, I think that relationships blossom really out of friendships. Like it could go either way when you meet somebody and you're attracted to them and they're attracted to you, they could easily be your friend, but every once in a while it goes the other way and it becomes something more than friendship. But it always kind of starts from the same place. So okay. I think like if, if you really want to find a local relationship, do what you're doing when you meet these long distance relationships, but do it locally. Go to local conventions or go to events where there's going to be like-minded people. Uh, but don't go there looking for a girlfriend or a girl to put the moves on. But keep your eye open for interesting people that you like, that you're attracted to. And then just give it a shot. Like try to get to know them and, you know, and maybe you get a cool friendship. Maybe it turns into something more or maybe that friendship opens up a social circle where you eventually meet somebody who, uh, you know, could be a potential relationship. Because a lot of times, you know, think about this. You meet a new person and they're cool and you're attracted to them. But for whatever reason, the relationship doesn't start. But then you meet one of their friends People tend to make friends with people who are similar to them. So you meet this one girl, didn't work out with her. You guys become friends, but she knows another girl who's very similar, who maybe is even more attractive, and that girl's into you. So you never know where these social circles are going to lead. But it all starts with kind of just rolling the dice, taking a shot, giving it your your best effort, and putting yourself out there. Okay. Yeah. Um the only thing that's really interesting I mean, that I find like interesting about myself is that I don't think I act differently between like when I'm finding friends a uh, long distance or uh, locally. And it's just odd that like every time it just happens, like I do make these friends, but it's just oddly enough, always long distance. Um, and that never actually, I don't think that ever comes into play when I'm like deciding who, like who I find interesting. It's, I think it's just, it could just honest, honestly be coincidence, but um, well, I, you know, the thing is about conventions and I've experienced this myself when you're, when you're at a convention and you're out outside of your hometown, you're kind of a different person. You're kind of like in adventure mode. You're feeling more adventurous. You're having a lot of fun. A convention is kind of like a three day party that never stops and you're open to new experiences and you're like a stranger in a strange land. You're, you're kind of open to do anything. You'll go to places uh, you know, it's easy when you're at home in your hometown to have the party end at the end of the night. And then you just go back to your regular old life and, you know, your boring, monotonous daily routine. It's very easy to retreat back into your shell, but I find, okay, so oh, what? Go ahead. Uh, you're saying that like, I, it's maybe unconscious for me that yeah. like, I'm not. Okay. I think like subconsciously you might be just loving life a little bit more when you're out at these conventions. Maybe you're making a better first impression or maybe you're just subconsciously more open to new experiences and, and these people are more attracted to you. I think that, you know, I experience this when I go to conventions with mega 64, I tend to have a lot more fun when I'm traveling for a convention. Cause in a way it's sort of like a mini vacation. It's a little bit of an adventure. When I do local conventions, yeah. like in Los Angeles or even San Diego Comic Con, it's honestly a little bit more boring because when the convention ends, I just get in my car and I drive home and I go back to my regular life. When I'm in a different okay. town, I'm willing to go out. I'm willing to meet new people. I'm willing to have new experiences. And I don't really – I'm open to anything. I don't care what we're doing as long as we keep the adventure going. But here in San okay. Diego, it's like, okay, convention's done. Work is over going back home yeah. and I kind of just retreat. So that's why I say, you know, you may not even realize you're not doing it, but just putting yourself out there, being more open to new experiences, being more receptive. It kind of takes a little it, bit more effort when it's in your hometown. 
it's um, what you're saying. It's just it's just all making sense now, kind of like I'm actually thinking back to uh, just the last event. Um, game days, actually. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, that's all I'll say, but. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> OK, yeah, don't say too much, uh, but. OK, totally. Uh, yeah, it's it is. Um, I am definitely in another world, so. Um, uh do you think I could um the way to counteract that do you think I should just be more like try to act more like I'm having a 3 day vacation Yeah just, totally uh, be, fake it until you make it up. When you go to events okay. locally like talk yourself up a little bit and just you know go in saying like I'm going to be receptive to anything that happens tonight like no expectations maybe it'll be cool maybe it won't but I'm really going to put myself out there I'm going to say yes to new experiences I'm not going to retreat home and, you know, it's very easy to just, when the going gets tough, to think like, oh man, I have my PlayStation waiting for me back at home. I could go get into my bed. I could go into my comfort zone. Like, force yourself to stay out of your comfort zone a little bit. It might be uncomfortable. Okay. It might suck for a little bit, but it'll be worth it when you start making these connections that you're looking for. Okay. I, I'm definitely up for it. I feeling so. I'm excited uh, well, at the prospects. Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear you're excited, and I hope it all works out for you, and I really appreciate the call. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Anonymous Caller. Good luck. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, everybody, we're going to do another email. This one comes from a viewer who goes by the letter J, and it says, Dear Heart Slayers, I am a teacher, and I work very closely with one other teacher at my school. I often find myself feeling underappreciated compared to her, and I'm jealous of them. It feels like I put forth so much effort, so much more effort than them, yet my boss is never appreciative of the extra work that I do. Rather, they always seem to be rewarding her or taking her side in arguments. One example, I teach over 500 students. I had all their names memorized by the end of the first week of my school. My coworker, who teaches the same students, didn't have their names memorized even a year after teaching them. Another example. We had a due date to input our grades this semester. I had my grades entered the very first day it was possible. My coworker went on vacation and didn't even enter her grades. It became a huge ordeal for everyone involved. Despite instances like those, she still gets favorable treatment from my boss. The students also like her way more than me. It feels like no matter how much effort I put in, how personable I try to be, or how patient I am, nothing seems to go my way. I guess my question is, what should I do moving forward? Do I keep working hard and letting myself get walked all over? Do I put my foot down and potentially cause a scene? How can I endear myself to my boss and students? Thanks, Jay. Jealousy in the workplace. You feel like you work harder, you work better, you work smarter and faster than your coworker, and yet she seems to get all the accolades and you never get any respect. You never get any attention. Uh, well, so obviously I'm not a teacher. I don't have 500 students, but I can definitely relate to jealousy in the workplace because I am a YouTuber. <laughs> And there are way other YouTube channels that are way more famous and successful than Mega64. And I feel like they put out garbage. And I feel like we put out some pretty cool stuff sometimes. But we don't get the appreciation we want. Uh, now, I don't feel this way so much anymore. And that is to say I used to feel this jealousy a lot more in the past. Uh, but I can relate to what you're saying. And I've ev even had other jobs outside of Mega64, that were kind of similar, where I had a coworker who just seemed to be better liked, more respected, more popular, the bosses appreciated them, and I just felt like I deserved some of that for myself too, and I didn't get it. Um, now here's my advice to you, before I get to your specific questions. Jealousy doesn't look good on anybody, and if you find yourself getting jealous, if you find yourself turning green with envy, it could start to play tricks on your mind. And little tiny aggressions can be blown up into huge things that are way bigger than they need to be. And sometimes you'll read into situations that you don't need to be reading into 
because you have this jealous bug fueling this kind of mania inside your own mind. Uh, so my advice to you is try not to compare yourself tit for tat with this other person. Yeah, they don't memorize names as well as you do. Yeah, they're sloppy with their with the grades that they input. But what does that mean? Does that mean that you're going to stop memorizing students' names? Does that mean that you're not going to work as hard to be the best teacher that you possibly can be? Uh, being a teacher, I think in your situation, the, the things you do, you do them because you think that that's what makes you a good teacher. And it shouldn't be about having this kind of petty competition with another employee there. Now, I understand that you feel like you need more respect from your boss. Specifically, your questions are, what should I do moving forward? Do I keep working hard, letting myself get walked all over? Keep working hard. Definitely keep working hard. That's what makes you you. That's what makes you an individual. People probably really appreciate you. They're just not showing it. Oftentimes, people don't compliment the good things that we do in life, instead they just criticize the things that we get wrong. They kind of take you for granted and they just assume like, well, you're great. So just keep being great and we don't need to compliment you. Uh, do I put my foot down and potentially cause a scene? Yes, put your foot down, but don't cause a scene. Maybe just start dropping some hints to your boss about how proud you are of the things that you do right. I mean... If they didn't notice that you learned 500 students' names in one week, you know, just drop a little hint. Like, oh, man, got every student's name in one week. Say that to your boss. High five them. You know, have a little bit of camaraderie and let your boss share in your personal victories. Like, get a little bit into some self-promotion. Just be happy for yourself and let other people feed into your happiness. Because everybody likes uh, feeding off of positive emotions and positive vibes. So keep it posy. Uh, what else? How can I endear myself to my boss and my students? Well, here's my advice to you. Instead of endearing yourself to your boss and your students, I think you should endear yourself to that teacher that you feel so jealous about. Uh, maybe you haven't realized this, but is perhaps your jealousy getting in the way of you having a good friendship with that teacher? Obviously, that teacher's doing things that are making people love them, and it has nothing to do with learning names or putting grades in on time. Have you unlocked the secrets to their success? Maybe by being friendly with them and buddying up to them and forming a friendship with them, you can have whatever it is about them that everybody else loves so much rub off on you. And that's something that I personally learned and did at a previous job. Uh, you know, I... I actually, you know, a lot of people out there know I used to work at a bookstore and I got hired at the same time with this other person. And this other person was really like wanted to prove their worth and wanted to show everybody that they were the best worker. And I started feeling like they were rising faster in the company than I was, which didn't bother me because I didn't care. Like I wasn't comparing my career to theirs. We were working in a bookstore. It wasn't a lifelong career for me. But I did find that I felt like they started to resent me a little bit for whatever reason. Like they would start double checking on jobs I was doing. And even though they weren't my superior, they started acting like they were my superior. I had two ways I could have responded to that situation. I could have basically approached them with, fuck you. Who do you think you are? You think you're better than me? But that's not what I did. I went the other route. I told myself, I'm going to make it impossible for this person not to like me. I'm going to be so effing friendly to this person. I'm going to be their best friend. Even though they're snarky to me, even though they kind of treat me like shit, I'm going to make them so bad for treating me like shit. And I would always smile. I would be extra friendly to them. And you know what happened? They ended up loving me. They came all the way around. My plan worked. I made it impossible for them not to like me. That's not quite the same as your situation, but I do think if you start making an extra effort to buddy up to that person who you're jealous of, you're going to find the whole situation gets a lot better. If you guys get close, then everybody's going to start associating you with them. You're going to be a team. The students are going to start liking you more. Your boss is going to start pairing you together mentally. And then all the things you're already doing. 
being the more studious teacher, entering the grades faster, learning everybody's name, that is going to elevate you above them. You're going to be a pair, and then you're going to be the superior one. That's what I predict, and that is my advice to you. Thank you for your email, Jay. I hope it all works out for you. Good luck. All right, everybody, we are on the phone here with Stink Dink. Stink Dink, you are talking to one of the Heart Slayers. That would be me, Derek. What's happening? Hey, uh, so uh, I've been going to university now for probably about seven or eight months, and uh, I ended up meeting this girl last semester, kind of in the middle of the year, and I, I thought she was really cute when I first met her, and uh, I was always trying to figure out how to talk to her, and uh, she came in wearing this metal shirt that... Uh, I, I was kind of surprised she was wearing, she didn't seem like one of those chicks, but I really liked the music, so started talking to her about it, and uh, we ended up hanging out a little bit, and uh, she I, she opened up to me pretty quickly, I would say, and she had a boyfriend at the time, and she, she had, I, I guess the only way I could say this is, she had a ton of emotional baggage from this relationship she had just gotten out of a couple months beforehand. And so I was, I found talking to her kind of jarring because I really liked her, but the amount of emotional baggage was tough to deal with. So I kind of backed off for a while. And so a couple months go by and we still talk kind of constantly, I would say, not too often, but uh, probably about a month or two ago, she starts talking to me a lot more and we start hanging out a lot more. And uh, this weekend goes by where she invites me over to her place every single day. Like four days in a row, uh, she invites me over and wants to hang out with me and see me. And she's like, I would show up to her apartment and she would be drinking and kind of get really touchy and hands on with me and try to get me to start drinking with her. And I was always like, I started getting all these really weird mixed emotions where I was like, oh God, I really didn't have any feelings for you. But now it's like you're it, it felt like she was reciprocating and i was like oh god and but she was still dating this other guy and she it it got really complex and it was just really odd and i eventually told her that i had feelings for her and she kind of uh, she more or less said she had she felt something but she wasn't really sure what it was like it, she gave me this really weird, dumb answer where she's like, yeah, I feel like it was 15% uh, of romantic and, what was it, 85% platonic. And I was, which was weird that she gave me a percentile on it. Yeah. So I, that was already kind of strange. And so I was like, okay, well, it's probably better if I back off because if I have feelings for somebody that doesn't feel the same way, it's probably not the best to stick around because it's just going to get worse and worse. So I, I, I went over to her, I told her, I was like, hey, I think we should talk about this one more time because I kind of feel like we should probably stop talking because it's just going to be emotionally depleting on me. And she, I told her that, and she started crying and sending me these, she was sending me Snapchats of her crying about uh, me bringing that I was going to stop talking to her. And I was like, oh God, this is feeling really weird. And I went over to her house, the, or her apartment the next day, and she had created this list of comparing me and her boyfriend, like a pros and cons of dating the both of us, which was really out of right field because she kind of told me beforehand that she didn't want to date, which was already, I, I, I had gone over there with the intent of breaking off most connection with her, and then she brings out this list, and I was... That already, that threw me off really hard, and she was kind of like, well, I really don't know what I want from you now because I have all these mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. And so that, it got really complex, and I ended up having my birthday the next couple of days, and she hung out with me, and it kind of was like a date. We went hiking, and we went to a movie, and we hung out, and then I, I ended up in a place. We didn't do anything, but she fell asleep on me, which was also pretty weird and i found out she had not told her boyfriend any of the stuff that she had been thinking about me like the list or that she had developed feelings for me or whatever she wanted to call it and i was like okay this is starting to feel like emotional cheating like she's putting all this in, uh investment on me but 
not telling them your boyfriend. So I started feeling weird and I was like, Hey, you got to tell me what this is. I don't want to keep doing whatever this is. Like, it's nice, but it, it feels really shitty. And so she eventually was kind of told me, yeah, we're, I don't know. It's probably just, I was scared of losing you. But so about two or three weeks have gone since that point, And she still talks to me all the time. And I'm like trying to back off. And I tell her like, no, I don't want to hang out with you in person anymore because that's generally when all the issues happen where you get touchy with me, you fall asleep on me. And that's when I get confused, but it's like, ah, and it feels like we have this weird connection still and she just doesn't want to admit it or she doesn't want to, I don't know. It's, it's a really complicated issue, but I just like, I'm having trouble trying to break it off. Like recently this past weekend, uh, I had told her, I was like, look, I don't think it's a good idea for her to us hang out. And she got drunk by herself, which was a pretty bad idea, in my opinion. And uh, she kind of told me that she was thinking about killing herself and laying that down on me because I was creating distance. And I now I'm so like, it feels like I can't back off because there's so much emotional involvement going on. I don't Damn. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's a long involved situation and story. Uh, sorry to hear that you went through all that. Yeah. <laughs> what it, what, what exactly is your question though? What should you do now? How do you get out I, of the situation? It was partially, I just kind of wanted to talk about it cause it's been on my mind for a while and I have some friends I talk to about it, but I've been getting a lot of mixed messages from them or they're yeah and they'll just tell me like you should just cut it off completely but it's not that simple like i'm so emotionally entwined with her at this point it's when was the last time you talked to her i like we oh i i we talk almost every day yeah oh man yeah it's if the only way i could describe it is it feels like i'm her emotional boyfriend almost like she tells me that she doesn't tell her boyfriend a whole lot, like when she's feeling sad or happy or whatever. And she's like, still she's still with her boyfriend right now. Yeah. Okay. Do they live together? Uh, no. She she lives on the campus, the university we go to, and I'm about to move into that campus here in another month or two, which yeah. is also going to make it a little more com- complicated. But how long has uh, she been dating that boyfriend? Do you know? Uh, so when we, we started talking last October, it was probably, they had been dating maybe like a few weeks before that. Oh. Yeah. Well, so I, I kind of showed up in the, <laughs> I almost want to call it really bad timing because I do feel like we have this really great connection, but I kind of like missed the mark by a few weeks. Now, but, let me tell you, let me tell you. Uh, I, she likes I, you. She likes you. She clearly likes you. I could yeah. see if it was like she had been dating with this boyfriend for like years and then you came along uh, and all this, everything you're saying, like emotional cheating and, and you don't want to get involved with her because she has this other boyfriend. But if they had only been dating for a few weeks, that's not really a super well-established, stable, unbreakable bond relationship at that point. <clears throat> yeah. I, I wouldn't put her boyfriend on too high of a pedestal above you. Um, honestly, I don't, I'm willing to wager that her relationship with her current boyfriend is probably as unstable as her relationship is with you. Um, what, what I've, uh, kind of ascertained from talking to her about it and seeing how they kind of interact with each other is, uh, she controls the relationship 100%. Well, it sounds like, like she controls, yeah. she's trying to control your relationship as yeah, well. It's, uh, that, that's what it was like. Okay. The, her bringing up all this emotional, like, the whole suicide, whatever stuff she started bringing out of nowhere, that was, I think, the ultimate emotional trump card she pulled on me to kind of keep me yeah, totally. in the loop. Well, this yeah. is what I was going to say. Uh, my advice was going to be, she clearly likes you. And, you know, the heart is a fickle beast. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect somebody else to 
match your level of, of emotional involvement. Just because you like somebody a certain amount doesn't mean that they're going to like you the same amount at the same time. It's not yeah. like a even, you know, I like you this much, so you like me this much. I love you, mm -hmm. so you love me. In a relationship, there's always a dynamic. Somebody's always going to be more involved in the relationship than the other person. What kind of destroys relationships or makes them not work or makes them uncomfortable is expecting the other person to match your level of emotion yeah. and expecting them to be on your timeline. What is great for a relationship is patience and nurturing. So what I was going to say was that you may be messed up by saying, by expecting her to like you as much as you liked her. When she said she liked you 15%, that is really mm -hmm. kind of meaningless because what she's saying is she is romantically interested in you. Uh, you know, it's like a meter. It goes up and down. If you would have maybe played it cool and just acted as if she was really into you without expressly expecting her to vocalize <laughs> that, she probably would have liked you more and more. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. also, like like I said, the heart is fickle. So when you pulled back and she started thinking about everything she was going to lose, suddenly you're on her mind more. And she yeah. wants you more and more. She finds herself <laughs> thinking about you more and more. Well, that's, um, that's uh, when I kind of threatened to remove myself from the picture. What my, one of my concerns was is that she doesn't actually have any feelings. She just was like self, like, er, <clears throat> self-inflating those feelings to be yeah. like... Well, yeah, like, you know, it's kind of irrelevant what what she thinks and feels because you're never mm -hmm. going to be able to know what she thinks and feels. You're not going to be able to read that. And oftentimes people don't even know themselves what they think and feel. Mm -hmm. she, may, she may not even know how she feels about you. So she might have trouble like expressing it and making it really hard for you to know. The best thing you can do is to know how you feel about her. If you want to be in a relationship with her, you can pursue it. And if you don't want to be in a relationship with her, you don't have to pursue it. And again, this is all stuff I was going to say. But then you told me about how she threatened uh, to hurt herself or harm herself because yeah. of the way you were treating her. <clears throat> and then well, she, she um, didn't expressly say that it was because of me, but it was. Well, when you mentioned that, little, yeah. it makes me <clears throat> think back. It kind of casts a new lens over your entire story. And now I'm thinking about she drinks a lot she gets emotional she was snapchatting you uh while she was and crying I, I i will say that i've been considering or i talked i told her that i think she should probably get a therapist because she's clearly got a lot of emotional stuff going on and you said that I, she had yeah. a lot of emotional baggage when you first started talking she had baggage with her boyfriend <laughs> She snapchatted yeah. herself crying uh, because you upset her, which is pretty manipulative. And yeah, uh, for sure. I think we've talked about that on the podcast before. And then, you know, expressing like suicidal tendencies uh, and, and making you feel somehow responsible. <clears throat> These things all point to the fact that she might be an emotionally manipulative person. And these aren't the best foundations for a relationship. <laughs> like if you okay. did get into a relationship with this girl, it's not like all of that behavior is going to go away. It's probably going to become amplified. And every little thing you do that upsets her, she's going to like point out how you're the one who's making her feel bad. She, she does sound yeah. unstable. So at yeah. first I was going to suggest, you know, I was going to say, it sounds like she's into you. It sounds like she wants to be with you. If you play it cool and you don't force her to commit to a relationship, but you just act as if you guys are really into each other and you spend a lot of time together, you're going to find that she likes you more than she likes her boyfriend and a relationship could probably blossom there. But with everything else factoring into the situation, I would probably advise steering clear of a romantic relationship with her. That's uh, – I – 100% my logical side looks at it and goes, oh, this is bad news. You need to back off. But, yeah. you know. You should listen heart, to that voice. Heart, heart and brain do not want to. They're really against each other in this notion. Absolutely. And your heart will always, yeah. your heart will always fuck you up in this situation. I find uh -huh. that, you know what? Really try to listen to that smallest, quietest voice in the back of your head. 
because your heart is gonna have all these loud alarms being like, well, she's cute, she's into me, we have so much fun together, I think I might love her, she might be, we might have a beautiful relationship. But if in the back of your head, there's this little tiny voice saying, yeah, but, but don't do it, this is a bad idea. That is the voice you should listen to. And it's often the hardest voice to listen to, but it's the one you should really follow because that is your, you know, that's your intuition talking to you. Yeah. And it's probably not wrong. What I would say to this girl is if she go back to that conversation about 15%, 85% and tell her that is how you feel about her now. You know, <laughs> there was a chance for some romance. <laughs> Throw yeah. it back at her, honestly. Like, you know, next conversation, tell her, like, I care about you a lot, and there was a time when I felt myself developing feelings for you. But when we had this conversation about the 15 to 85%, that really resonated with me. And I think that that is the, you know, the truest thing you ever said. Like, there is, like, a 15% thing there, but, you know, it's probably better just to keep it as a friendship, at least for now. And don't, yeah. don't go into a relationship now. Let her figure out her baggage. Let her figure out the stuff going on with her boyfriend and maybe in a few months or next year, maybe yeah. the, maybe a romantic relationship can happen then, but it'll have a better foundation because it's not predicated <clears throat> on all this emotional, like manipulative, unhealthy stuff mm -hmm. that needs to get out of her system. Otherwise you're going to lock it in forever and you're going to doom the relationship from the start. That's uh, why I was kind of, Telling, or we were having a conversation about how maybe a therapist would be good because she's she just tells me at this point that she's confused about how she feels about me which yeah. is one of the most ambiguous answers you could give about something but it, it's you know i wouldn't want to date her if she broke up with her boyfriend immediately that's without that, that's immediately already bad yeah a bad call to do but you know I don't know. It's it's kind of how you say it. it's like I just want to be around her, I guess. Totally. And you know what? Like yeah. these situations, they happen to a lot of guys and they get in the way of like good relationships cuz you could mm. probably be dating somebody else who doesn't have a boyfriend, who doesn't have all this emotional baggage, but you're not perceptive <clears throat> to those situations cuz you're spending all your time with this girl and this is kind of a non-starter relationship mm -hmm. not every relationship works out and some relationships get further than others sometimes you like somebody and they are just a friend sometimes you like somebody and they like you but for whatever reason it still doesn't work out every once in a while you do have a relationship but it's not a guaranteed thing every time this sounds like maybe there was potentially a relationship there but as it is now it's kind of self-destructing it's off to a bad path it may never work out and that's okay yeah. But, you know, don't try to force it. Just just look at it objectively and maybe at a future date it could work out or maybe just this is not the girl for you and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of just laugh at myself. for I played this so poorly, I guess, in my mind where I thought she was laying down signals and I was like, okay, you know, I usually don't kind of. Yeah, she totally was. She's totally into yeah. you. But it sounds like she kind of is like a wishy-washy person. She doesn't even know what she wants out of life. So yeah. next time, let me tell you, don't force the relationship issue. Don't ask, mm -hmm. you know, don't try to force them to admit that they have feelings. Just spend a lot of time with a girl and let it just develop naturally. You know what I mean? I, I, I guess one of my fears, though, in that uh, idea was I didn't want to become like the... What do you call it? I don't want to call it like the, it's not the monkey branching where it's kind of like, they kind of just keep you around for the emotional comfort, but yeah. they will never reach any like physical. Well, you don't level. have to let yourself become anything you don't want to. I mean, it's really yeah. easy to just, you know, not, not fall into that role. Just if you feel like that's what's happening, just create some distance. You don't owe anybody anything. There's no obligation to, to be that, somebody. That's what I that's what support. I tried, and then she laid down a bunch of emotional bullshit, and I <laughs> well, still just be strong, just be firm yeah. with her, and tell her like, "Look, I am not the person who's responsible for this," you know, mm. and that'll probably piss her off, but that's okay, piss her off. Like, I mean, don't if she is like threatening to harm herself, uh, you know, maybe urge her to get help, but let her know that like, because obviously yeah. it affects you when she gets all upset and acts that way. It's not like you're just this impenetrable 
wall of emotional strength. Like it, it's hard on you too. It's emotionally draining to be around somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, manipulative people, they don't really care. They just kind of think about themselves and they don't care about how they're affecting the other person, or maybe they're not aware of it. So that's the way you can be strong. You can tell her like, look, you can't treat me this way because this is not like cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I know. I, 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 I asked her a couple or once or twice. I was like, what do you think I should do? Like objectively, if you were looking at this from an outside source, what do you think would be best for me? And she would say, well, I think you should just step away until you don't have feelings for me. And then we can be friends again. And I was like, okay, so well, you, there you go. You're really, you're really not, think into you're being really biased i guess i think that's great advice i think that maybe that's the path that you should go maybe i it's uh, it's i i'm gonna hope she gets a therapist and the therapist can help her out a little bit because it's it's troublesome to say the least yeah well uh i mean thanks for the call stink dink yeah. and I, I hope it all works out so good luck yeah thank you man all right see ya Okay, everybody, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who emailed us and called us. Hey, if you have a situation, you can call us on Discord at bit.ly slash heartslayers. We are taking new calls every Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific time. You can also email us at heartslayers at mega64.com. Uh, I also want to give a big thank you to our patrons, everybody who supports us on patreon.com slash mega64 gets access to all of these episodes two weeks early. Hey, if you have, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you have your own take on any of these issues, feel free to write a comment in the comment section. I know everybody who appeared on this episode, uh, even though they love my advice and I probably solved their problem, they would love to hear what you think about it, especially if you've been in a situation similar to any of these yourself. You can follow Heart Slayers on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Heart Slayers to keep updated on all the Heart Slayers news and when new episodes and new recordings are happening. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Gustavo and on Instagram at Derek Acosta only. And even though she isn't here, Meg is always available on social media at Furnace Woods. That's our show for today, everybody. We want to thank you for watching. Until next time, stay cool. Bye-bye.